Hi, my name is Charles O'Brien. I'm a professor of medicine at the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences, and I'm also a research scientist at the Central Arkansas Veterans Healthcare System. And uh, uh, my laboratory is in the Center for Osteoporosis and Metabolic Bone Diseases here at UAMS. And this is a center that was founded by Stavros Manilagas almost 20 years ago. And in the center, we have several different uh, laboratories that are investigating different aspects of uh, skeletal biology and skeletal disease. And the focus of my particular laboratory is to understand the process of bone remodeling. Now, bone remodeling is the process by which bone is constantly renewed throughout life. And uh, it's a dysregulation of this process that leads to many forms of osteoporosis or low bone mass. So low bone mass or osteoporosis is a condition where uh, there's an increased propensity to fracture. And the long-term goal of all the studies that we're doing is to, to prevent that from occurring. And so the process of bone remodeling is accomplished, this bone renewal process, is accomplished by teams of cells working together. And there's two really important cell types in the team. Uh, the osteoclast, which is a large multinucleated cell uh, at the beginning of, at the head of the team, and they uh, are the bone resorbing cell. They excavate bone by secreting uh, acid and proteases that dissolve existing bone matrix, usually old bone matrix. And they're followed in space and time by the bone forming cells known as the osteoblasts. Osteoclast, the bone resorbing cell, it comes from hematopoietic precursors, and the bone forming cell, the osteoblast, comes from mesenchy mesenchymal progenitors. And these cells work together as a team, excavated with the osteoclast in front, excavating a, a, a hole or a cavity on the surface of bone, and then the osteoblast coming in behind and filling in that cavity. Now, when everything is working well under normal conditions, uh, all of the bone that's resorbed by the osteoclast is completely replaced by the osteoblast, and that leads to a balanced process and maintains bone mass and, and, and healthy, a healthy skeleton. But in situations where the balance is lost and either the osteoclast resorb too much bone or the osteoblasts don't put back enough bone, you lose bone mass and have this increased propensity to fracture and osteoporosis. Now this can occur in a lot of different situations. The one that many people are probably most familiar with is when estrogen levels are low or androgen levels are low. But it also occurs when there's long-term use of uh, therapeutic glucocorticoids. Uh, and even more important, or the focus of our group, is that even with aging, in all individuals, normal aging, bone mass is lost. And so uh, if we all live long enough, there's an increased risk for fractures no matter who you are or what uh, your other conditions might be. And so the goal of our laboratory is that, uh, or the, the, one of the, the main goals is to understand this process of bone remodeling so that we can understand what might be going wrong to lead to the, dis the imbalances that occur with estrogen deficiency or with aging. And so one of the, the main ways that we do that is by understanding the proteins that control osteoclast formation. That's really been the focus of my laboratory. We've been studying a protein known as rank ligand. It's a cytokine that drives the formation of these large multinucleated osteoclasts. And uh, it's been known for many, time, many years that this protein is involved in the process, that it's required for the process, and that the amount of rank ligand is actually, de it actually determines the amount of osteoclast that you get. And so my lab has been trying to understand where that rank ligand is coming from, where, what cells make this protein that drives osteoclast formation. And our, our, one of our recent observations has been that uh, a cell known as the osteocyte is a really important source of this, uh, this uh, protein. So what are these osteocytes? It's, a, it's another cell that's in bone. It actually comes from the osteoblasts. When the osteoblasts are filling in that cavity with new bone matrix, some of them become buried alive within that bone matrix, and they actually stay connected to, with each other and to cells on the bone, form, um, the bone surface, forming a, a, a living network of cells within the bone matrix. And this uh, network of cells is thought to have many different functions, but the one that we've been focused on recently is its control of osteoclast formation. And it was this finding of ours that, that uh, and another group in Japan, that uh, osteocytes produce this rank ligand protein really revealed that they are a major contributor, a major driver of osteoclast formation and the overall process of bone remodeling. And so what we're doing now is we're trying to understand the molecular mechanisms that uh, control rank ligand production in this cell type and then what might be changing with age, whether the, the uh, osteocytes make, might make more or less rank ligand uh, with age and in different conditions that cause osteoporosis. 
And it, uh, this uh, has also changed the focus of my laboratory. We're, we're spending more time thinking about other things that might be happening to osteocytes in these conditions that might be changing uh, and, and leading to low bone mass. Uh, one of the important processes we're interested in right now is the process of autophagy, which is uh, it's kind of a, a cellular self-renewal uh, or recycling process in which old components in the cell are broken down and renewed or reused uh, used to make energy. And we have some uh, preliminary evidence that the process of autophagy may, might be declining with age in osteocytes and that uh, if we can prevent that from occurring, we might actually maintain the health of the osteocytes and the health of the bone even with aging. And so these are the, the, the projects that we're really focused on right now, understanding how osteocytes, what controls rank ligand production by osteocytes, and how autophagy might be contributing to osteocyte health. And so I'd like to end by uh, acknowledging the people in the lab that, that do the work, all the graduate students, uh, the fellows, and the technicians. It's a really outstanding team of, of uh, people in the lab that get this stuff done and that do the really smart stuff. And I think it's also important to acknowledge our funding sources. We have funding from both the National Institutes of Health and the Department of Veterans Affairs.